Hi, this is Doug Higgins with Avatar Geospatial, and today I wanted to do a quick view of Pix4D Survey. I have been using Pix4D Matic and Pix4D Cloud Advanced for the last couple of months, and uh, I like those products. Um, they work most of the time whenever you have a homogeneous data set flown at the same elevation. Um, it gets a little wonky with uh, when you mix terrestrial data with the aerial data sets, but uh, the data set I'm using for this project was captured with a uh, Matrice 300 and a L1 LiDAR system. So what you're looking at here is L1 LiDAR data from the DJI M300 drone and I flew it at about 130 feet um, and if you zoom in here this is the level of granularity you know that we're looking at so you can see it's pretty rich in terms of tree data you know buildings and uh, it classify it, it it captures pretty well the uh, richness of the three-dimensional environment you know so let me zoom back out here um, it's also worth noting that I have the point size on this set uh, a little bit high, you know, so the point size filter, you know, if you go higher, will make this look more complete and give it a little richer color. If you, uh, if you reduce the size, then you get something more sparse like this, but it's a bit more precise if you're looking at line work or curbs and gutters, that kind of thing. Uh, you might want to zoom down on the point size a little bit, but again, um, for what I'm trying to do today, uh, I'm just going to zoom back out, you know, to a slightly larger, about, you know, 15 or 16, 17. That looks pretty good. So I'll zoom back out here and reorient this to the way we had it before uh, and then show you some of these features. So first of all, uh, you input your point cloud data here, and that comes out of DJI Terra for me, but it could be a point cloud from any laser software that uh, gets processed in here. Then we come down to uh, the point cloud, and uh, it looks like that's been pulled in and registered. Uh, the next thing I did was I classified these points into two categories. They all come in as unclassified and you need to classify them as terrain or non-terrain in order to generate accurate surface contours. So if I look at uh, the settings over here, these are the process filters. And so the first thing I did here was I detected and deleted outliers, you know, so that's if you have uh, a couple of random points that were erroneous, like you caught a raindrop or sprinklers or something like that um, in the air, then this will pull out you know, any noise and uh, make it look a little bit more um, digestible and clean. Next, they have the terrain filter. So this is an auto classification algorithm. And uh, I just use the default settings. You can play with this a little bit if you have a completely flat scene like a parking lot, you know, then something like flat would be a better choice. Uh, I have a bit of an irregular scene with a lot of topographical fluctuation, so I'm closer towards irregular, but it's not mountainous, so I'm not going all the way over. Uh, I played with the rigidity settings a little bit and settled on high. Uh, the big difference for me between the low setting and the high setting was the rooftop classification. When I set it to high, more of these rooftops were classified correctly as non-terrain uh, than terrain. And uh, here there were three kind of problem areas. One uh, on the rooftops where it went from the mansard roof that's pitched a little bit to a flat roof uh, up high. Those were classified originally as terrain, so I had to go back and reclassify those um, as non-terrain. And over uh, in this, this area, this is a structured parking garage and it flows right off the street. So it's not a surprise that this was classified as terrain, but because it's structured, I changed that back to non-terrain. 
and uh, and then these rooftops you know all came in I think uh, I think because of this flat white rooftop uh, the rest of this area came in as terrain uh, so these rooftops I had to go back and classify as, uh, as non-terrain but generally uh, good time saving tool all of the roads and golf course areas were correctly captured which uh, which I certainly appreciate and so a little bit of manual labor but not too bad the next the next thing analysis uh, that the software does is this grid analysis so it makes a grid of points based on the elevations I've turned those off here but if I come over to uh, 10 and I'm skipping layers because I didn't use those but uh, those are areas where you can calculate stockpiles and that kind of thing uh, I'm not using that here I'm just trying to generate contours so I'm skipping straight to 10 the grid of points I disabled but I'm going to enable that now and if you zoom in here you see all these little plus signs are elevation measurements that are being used that will be used to generate the contour lines and so that is a relatively quick but uh, CPU intensive exercise and uh, it took a couple of minutes you know on on this computer and then the tin is generated from the grid of points and that is basically a mesh of the terrain layer which connects between all of those grids of points and gives you some of those elevation profiles and then the contour lines are generated on top of that from the elevation changes in the tin. And I'm going to turn the tin off now, you know, just because it's a little easier to see these contour lines without it. But if you if you scroll out or, and uh, you know get a little more perspective here, you can see that uh, as you'd expect, there are some pretty significant gradient changes between. Uh, the golf course which is typically built in a watershed area and the homes above it uh, so that they get the views and they're out of the floodplain. So uh, so it looks like these contour lines are pretty reliable and over here you can see that the resort buildings are set up off the golf course as well and uh, as you would expect you know those uh, those are kind of graduated as you see these changes in dimension. So this is a ballroom that's set a little bit up off the golf course and then much further up you have the main campus which is kind of built on the top of the hill so that these all get the views over uh, the spa pool and the golf course area. Um, these are um, the main restaurant areas right here and uh, there's an upper deck and a lower deck and you can uh, you can see the contour lines show that they're well above uh, the golf course level so i think there was just one other thing uh, we already showed you the filter terrain the grid of points and um, and the contour lines so these were set at three foot intervals and every 15 feet you know there's a major grid line so that is what we're looking at here is a uh, a point cloud that has been classified as terrain and contour lines uh, that have have been generated from that with the grid of points and the um, con automatic contour features so thank you very much for watching, and uh, I will look forward to sharing the next thing I know shortly.